Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this series of videos, we are discussing about gel electrophoresis. The principle of gel electrophoresis, we have talked about the DNA agarose gel electrophoresis. Now it's time to talk about the protein gel electrophoresis that is also known as the SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis or SDS page. So what is SDS page? Uh, how SDS page is done? And what are the principles of SDS page? That's what we need to discuss in today's lecture. Okay, so to this lecture, let me uh, first take a color from here. Okay, red color. We'll be talking about SDS page polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Now, <clears throat> for simple idea, I'll give you the basic point of view of a electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is a technique with which we separate mixture of charged molecule by applying an electric field because when you apply an electric field molecules tend to separate tend to move towards a particular electrode based on the net charge that molecule carries okay and the movement of proteins if we particularly talk about the separation of proteins and we what we know about protein is that protein in general do not have a net charge like that okay so net charge of the protein can be mostly neutral if you talk about the globular or fibrous protein mostly it's neutral so the separation of protein is a tricky concept but the separation of the dna is an easy concept dna can be separated quite easily because dna has a negative charge due to the phosphodiester backbone right so it will migrate towards the plus end that's quite logical but for a protein if it does not carry any charge how can it will move right we need to personally add charge to the protein in order to make it move right that's what we do in sds page okay so full form sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis so in this gel electrophoresis what we use we use this is this is known as zone electrophoresis because zone electrophoresis is when we use solid matrix to separate our charged molecules or mixture so in this case we have the solid matrix and the matrix is prepared by acrylamide acrylamide okay so acrylamide we call it polyacrylamide because we are making polymer of acrylamide right so acrylamide we give acrylamide to another acrylamide and two acrylamide together will form what is known as bis acrylamide or simply known as bis right and in azarose gel, in polyacrylamide gel, this acrylamide and bisacrylamide ratio is very, very important in order to separate mixture of proteins. Okay. So when they say bis, it means bisacrylamide, it means two acrylamide together. But in order to make a polymer of acrylamide, we need to add specific chemicals to it. Okay. We need to add ammonium per sulfate. That's what we need to add. Okay, per sulfate is needed and this reaction will be catalyzed by another chemical known as TEMID. So with APS and TEMID, this acrylamide and BIS will produce polyacrylamide. This is how polyacrylamide is built. Okay, polyacrylamide is prepared. Once polyacrylamide is prepared, that means the matrix is ready. And what we mean by this matrix, this matrix, it looks something like a mesh like this. Through the mesh, the proteins can be separated because this mesh contains pores. Now the size of the pores vary depending on the percentage of polyacrylamide gel we are preparing. Okay, generally we prepare 15% polyacrylamide gel most of the cases in the lab 15% polyacrylamide gel to separate proteins up to 100 kilo dalton in size in molecular mass no size in molecular mass 100 kilo dalton in mass but if 100 if it's more than 100 kilo dalton then we need to reduce then we need to reduce the percentage of the gel so the bigger the the larger mass of the protein that we need to separate the less percentage of the polyacrylamide we need to use to make bigger pores because with 15 percent polyacrylamide the pores are smaller 
and polyacrylamide gel pores are smaller than agarose gel agarose gel creates bigger pores polyacrylamide gel creates smaller pores that's why dna generally cannot be separated bigger dna with the help of is like polyacrylamide gel dna gets separated with the help of agarose gel because agarose gel creates bigger pores and in polyacrylamide gel if the protein mass is still 100 kilo dalton it can be separated with 15% 15% acrylamide gel but if the mass is bigger 150 200 kilo dalton 500 kilo dalton then we need to reduce the percentage of gel to even 7% sometimes 6 7% of polyacrylamide gel to segregate or separate bigger mass proteins okay this is another funda that you need to know now what the idea of separation so here i'll i'll take different color where is it let's change the color i'll take the black or blue whatever so what i am to talk now is very important try to understand it a protein so we are talking about a protein right and when we talk about a protein a protein can be separated based on three key points okay what are the points point number 1 is the unit charge per mass okay unit charge means the amount of net charge per gram of uh, i mean not gram in this case if you are talking about per dalton of the protein's mass so we call it as a density or charge density same thing unit charge per mass equals to the charge density of the protein so amount of charge per unit of mass okay this is one thing second thing so this is first thing and what is the relation between the segregation is that the charge density if it has higher charge density it will migrate faster got it so the net movement of the protein with charge density is proportional the second important point here is the mass of the protein of course mass is an important factor right only mass so smaller the protein migrate further larger the protein will migrate slower quite logical so the relation of net movement is inversely proportional to the mass and the third thing is the size of the protein a type of the protein we are talking about means the protein is globular or fibrous okay if the protein is globular or fibrous what is the difference if the protein is globular then it is more compact it will migrate further if it is fibrous then it has more frictional force to stop the movement so the movement is slow for a fibrous protein movement is fast for the globular protein these three important parameters are always there when we are separating a protein and one big challenge that is the protein net charge is not minus or plus so how do you separate proteins right for some proteins maybe the net charge is plus 1 plus 2 something but if it if there is no proper net charge but the mass are different masses are different for different proteins and there is a mixture of such proteins how can we separate that's the challenge and it can be separated based on these three parameters that's another challenge so as a molecular biologist we need to find a way in order to keep every single type of protein in this race in a legal way because you know in this race of separation when we load them in the acrylamide gel right if we load some globular protein if we load some uh, fibrous protein if we are loading a uh, higher charge protein lower charge protein there is not logical for the race to continue because automatically globular will get the advantage more charged protein will get the advantage right it's not a good way to quantify so what is the better way the better way here is to find a way where this three parameters will not matter only one parameter should matter so we found a way where only the mass of the protein matters and nothing else matters what is that way that way is to converts the protein three dimensional shape to a linear shape so to 
make the proteins, all the proteins that are there, whether it's globular, fibrous, anything, we make them linear. Once we make them linear and we tag them with negative charge. So we make them linear and we tag them with negative charge. This is very, very important. I'll, I'll move to the next uh, page here because this page is full. So to counter it out, we make them linear and what, we, what else we, we did? We make them negative charge. And both of these things should be done. Right? How to do that? To make them linear, we need to treat them with beta marcapto ethanol. Beta marcapto ethanol. BME. Beta marcapto ethanol treatment is done. What beta marcapto ethanol does is it breaks the disulfide linkages in the protein. And if you break the disulfide linkages in the protein, it will make the protein linear. So consider this idea. Let's say this is a protein. This is a disulfide linkage, another unit, right? Disulfide linkage. So BME will cleave it and will separate them as separate entities. So any further structures, further subunits of the protein connected by disulfide bridge will be completely separated as single straight chain of polypeptides. And this is the very first step. We make them linear. The second step, we make them negative charge with the help of SD, sodium dodecyl sulfate, SDS. And sodium dodecyl sulfate interacts to the amino acids. How they interact? Every two amino acid, one sodium dodecyl sulfate. This is how they interact. So sodium dodecyl sulfate interacts to two amino acids. One sodium dodecyl sulfate, two amino acids, and it carries one net negative charge. So the protein, linear proteins that we have, linear polypeptides that we have, they will be filled with negative charges. So whatever proteins we get with the same idea, it will have negative charge. So at this point, if we treat the proteins with beta marcapto ethanol first and then sodium dodecyl sulfate, then we can get rid of the charge density biasness. So it does not matter what is the charge density of the protein. It does not matter whether the protein is globular or fibrous because they are all will be treated the same and they all will be carrying a negative charge. Okay. And generally if a protein don't have a very high or very low charge naturally, natural very low or very high positive or negative charge, then treatment to SDS will make all the proteins almost at a similar charge, at a similar negative charge, so that when we apply a positive charge electrode, the protein will migrate towards the positive charge electrodes. That's normal idea. But sometimes some proteins have very high positive or negative charge. For example, histone. Histone protein, as it is a DNA binding protein, as DNA backbone has negative charge, histone carries very high positive charge. That is the neg native charge of histone. So native charge of histone is very high, very positive. So for histone, the utilization of SDS still will not change it much. Apart from that, this is one example. Okay, so one example where it uh, has some issue. Otherwise, generally, uh, this process works almost universally to all the proteins. So once we tag them, now we let, load them in the gel and we run the uh, SDS page, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Again, this negatively charged polypeptides will now run through those pores of polyacrylamide gel. Okay, And the smaller one, I mean uh, with the lesser mass, obviously, because now they are based on, so higher mass means lengthier proteins here. Lower mass means smaller proteins here. So obviously smaller proteins will migrate further. Larger proteins will migrate slower. That is the idea of polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Right? So smaller protein means less number of uh, amino acids means less mass. Larger proteins, lengthier protein means more amino acids, more mass. That's very simple. Okay? So now at the end what we can do, uh, I'll go back again to the earlier slide because I already have this image. So this is the polyacrylamide gel and what we can do is that we have one 
uh, here in this case we have a ladder sequence we can also call it as a marker or ladder whatever and then we load the load our gel okay so the marker has its own scale with different molecular weights and we are moving in from the high molecular high molecular weight to the low so high mass here and low mass here okay this is negative and this is positive means the plus end and remember plus end is anode not cathode minus end is cathode okay minus ions are anion but minus end is cathode plus ions are cations but plus end is anode so the movement is at this direction and once the movement is going on here what we can clearly see is again let's say there are different let's say one protein moved here and another one here and let's say one very dark band here like this so what you can say among this data that this particular protein migrated further so it is the smaller mass protein smallest among this mixture and this is the largest or biggest or having the highest molecular mass in this picture not molecular mass here particular highest mass in this picture okay and a band which is thick or thin means something thick band means we have more than one or more than one variety of protein in that particular range so that's why you have a thick band there okay thin band means we have less number of same length or same mass protein in that range so how can we determine the molecular mass of our target protein how can we determine the mass of our target protein what we simply do is uh, we have a graph basically so we have a graph like this so in this graph what we have relative movement okay in the uh, relative movement in the x axis and mass in the y axis this is what we have and what we can get from here is that simply we can we can load this gel with known fag known protein mass we know the mass of the protein and we we load it we run it so we get different values so based on that value based on those values we maybe a little bit here and there but mostly we create a straight line and from there let's say our target is somewhere here so based on that corresponding region let's say here what we get our target protein okay this is what we get and we extrapolate it to the molecular we extrapolate it to the mass so we find out the mass try to understand this graph so when we load them this is a standard curve standard curve means what with known mass of the protein known length of the protein we get this standard curve based on that we found out a relative movement of a protein there is something in the middle somewhere in the middle okay when we extrapolate it to the molecular uh, we extrapolate it to the mass we found out the approximate mass of the protein and generally with this method the the mass of the protein that we can determine is near about 5 to 10% 5 to 10% accuracy not 100% Uh, I mean, not five to ten percent accuracy. Sorry, uh, the error, the chance of error is five to ten percent. That means it has a like ninety to ninety-five percent accuracy. Ninety to ninety-five percent accuracy, ten to five to ten percent error. That is the idea. Okay. So this is how we can easily find out the mass of a protein, unknown protein, and this is how. the polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis is done if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye